and I'm glad you could join us for this masterclass on the potential for gas-based industrialization in Nigeria. Nigeria may be better known as an oil producing country, but Nigeria's gas reserves are large and represents more opportunities for industrialization of our economy, in addition to the associated job opportunities. Nigeria's proven gas reserves are 199 trillion standard cubic feet, with up to 600 trillion standard cubic feet of potential reserves. Earlier this year, the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources at a stakeholders conference in Abuja declared this to be the year of gas in Nigeria. Now to reap the benefit that gas provides, there needs to be heavy investment in developing a gas infrastructure in Nigeria. And to this point, the federal government's gas master plan focused on three strategies. One was gas to power, and then gas-based industrialization, and the third gas export market. In addition, uh, strategic priority initiatives include gas flare uh, commercialization, condensed natural gas development and penetration, and liquefied petroleum gas penetration. The sectoral linkages where opportunities exist for gas usage include power, fertilizer, petrochemical, cement, steel and aluminum, manufacturing, agriculture, transportation, and more. A key objectives of the gas department of NMPC are to maximize the usage of gas in the domestic economy, optimizing gas export opportunities, and to ensure the long-term gas energy security for Nigeria. Our distinguished panelists will, in the next 60 minutes, discuss some of the opportunities for creating an inclusive growth and development in the Nigerian gas sector, while highlighting regulatory challenges and capacity building opportunities for individuals, as well as companies that need to develop the capacity needed to play in the sector. My name is Afalabi Davidson of Energy Training Center, and I'll be your moderator for this webinar. But first, let's go over a few housekeeping rules. A recording of today's webinar will be available after the live discussions to all our participants through our website at etc.ng or the NLPGA website at, at Nigeria LPGAS, that's Nigeria LPGAS.com. To ask our panelists a question, you can type your question by using the QA icon available to you at the bottom of your screen. And would like to encourage you to share your key light bulb moments that you get during the webinar on your social media handles using the hashtag ETCGASWebinar. For those of you just joining us, welcome. It is my pleasure to introduce to you our guest panelists uh, for today in this masterclass that we are putting together in association with the Nigeria LPG Association. And here are our panelists in no particular order. Titilola Olaulu Hassan is the commercial manager at Navgas Limited. She has over 12 years experience in the oil and gas sector with expertise in storage, supply and distribution of LPG in Nigeria. She's a customer focused leader with a commitment to driving growth and promoting best practices in the LPG sector. She has global certifications, training and skills in strategy, commercial and terminal operations. Dr. Steve Johnston is the MD CEO of S Gas Limited Blackpool, United Kingdom. And he has over 38 years of gas industry experience with specialty in natural gas and LPG engineering. 
Steve has worked on many projects, including domestic and non-domestic gas utilization, uh, gas-related incident investigation, carbon monoxide-related incident investigation, explosion mitigation, fuel technology, fuel sprays, and atomization, among others. And Steve has been a consultant in many international and UK projects related to gas safety, quality control, auditing, quality management systems, gas safety management, gas-related incidences, and so on. He has also uh, training experience in renewable energy technologies, electrical regulations and inspection, inspection and testing, and F-gas refrigeration courses. And Steve holds a Master's of Science and a PhD in gas engineering and is a member of the Institution of Gas Engineers and Managers UK. Mr. Nuhu Yakubu is a seasoned energy and power business development and management expert with over 20 years industry experience. He has hands-on multi-sector experience cutting across the energy sector, upstream, downstream, as well as in power sector of Nigeria. Mr. Yakubu holds a certificate in strategic finance from the Harvard Business School a master's in industrial relations and personnel management from the University of Lagos, and a bachelor's in economics and management sciences from the Bendel State University. He has attended many management training and technical courses locally and internationally, including the Lagos Business School and the Texas A&M University in the US. Nuhu Yakubu is the group managing director of Banner Energy Limited, a gas power infrastructure development and trading company which owns and operates the largest network of LPG retail trading infrastructure in Nigeria, as well as the main promoter of the 500 megawatts on-grid electricity and 30 megawatts embedded electricity generation projects at Ikot Abasi and Lagos, respectively, in Nigeria. Nu is also the group in his group management capacity, the executive chairman of Homegate Nigeria Limited, the Properties Investment and Development Company, and he's a council member and the current president of the Nigerian Liquefied Petroleum Gas Association. Felix Ekundayo is a chemical engineer with over 30 years experience in the oil and gas industry, an expert in commissioning and operation of midstream and downstream oil and gas facilities. He is the UK trained chemical engineer and has spent more than 15 years of engineering experience covering midstream and downstream oil and gas processes, in particular refineries, gas treatment plants, petrochemical plants, pipelines, offsite and utilities with a number of multinational engineering companies such as Foster Wheeler, ICI, Bechtel, and Stone and Webster. He was a senior consultant with Nexant Limited, a world-renowned management consulting company to the energy industry. And during his time with Nexant, he consulted on various multi-billion dollar refining gas infrastructure, LNG and petrochemical projects around the world. And in 2006, he founded a leading LPG supply logistics and distribution company in Nigeria. The name of the company is Gas Terminaling Global Operations Limited with family and friends, which he runs today. Dr. Abubakar Abbas is a chartered engineer with Engineering Council UK under the Institution of Gas Engineers and Managers UK. He is a PhD graduate in gas engineering, a fellow of Higher Education Academy with over 15 years combined industrial and academic experience. Dr. Abbas is, lead, is leading international research collaboration with, with the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, partnerships in different areas of energy transition, and working with Brian Research and Enterprise in developing collaborative industry academia process digital teaching and learning using ProMath software engineering. Abubakar has graduated four PhD students in different fields of gas and petroleum engineering and has also published several high impact journal papers. He is currently uh, the program leader 
MSc Petroleum and Gas Engineering at the University of Salford, Manchester, UK, and consultant in many gas engineering projects across the globe. There is the profile of all of our distinguished panelists today. To start off the discussions, I will ask Dr. Abbas to lead off by sharing his thoughts on the topic third party gas access through network code and LPG utilization and safety. Dr. Abbas, are you ready? Yes, Mr. Apollos. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Al Bakar. Uh, I'm going to talk today regarding Nigerian Gas Transportation Network Code, but in practical terms, third party access to the gas. That means how does the gas get to us or get to the customer when and at whatever times or she needs the gas. These are the content of the highlights of what my presentation covers. So it's going to be hopefully very, very sharp presentation. I'm under the assumption that before a network could actually operate, the regulator who is the DPR is expected to have some number of stakeholders who are the key players in the gas industry. This place could different roles such as producer, uh, transporter, sesso, shipper, supplier, as well as a trader. Even though different licensing regime comes off as the market evolves. But these are the general assumptions we start with. Let us first of all look at the existing market which Nigeria has in terms of gas supply. This particular market is a market in which agreement between a purchaser and a producer is managed by gas aggregator, then regulated by DPR and PPRA so that the transporter transport the gas. Under this agreement or under this current structure, there are a number of issues that hinder third party access. And the most important one is the market rules are not very clear. So the, coming to the new structure on the right hand side, you'll be able to see how the future structure of the gas industry in Nigeria is expected to look like and how it will be able to provide some modification in which supplier has a direct contact with the customer being domestic or industrial. Then at the same time, the supplier can now employ shipper to deliver the gas to the customer through a transporter, which in this case is NGC. And then the gas gets to the customer. All this is under the platform of a regulator who is DPR. We are having insinuation of a possibility of shift in aggregator's role to become a, a, an intermediate between a shipper and a transporter. That is a possibility, but we await a further guidance from the regulator. So this is the current market system we do have. And the current market system, we have just made an assumption that there is an entry point in the market for the network coming into the system in which the federal government has already identified three key major pipeline networks, the Escrabos Lagos pipeline, the Western network, the Northern network. And of course, I have added the Eastern network we can make it in a clear terms. Under this arrangement, we have identified that there is an assumed daily capacity or daily required gas supply to Nigerian market of 1,200 1, million scope, which is 1.2 BCF, coming through these pipelines. And this gas is meant to be supplied to three different exits 
one, two, and three to different industries. Now, this letter regulating the overall process of third party access, we have seen producers, which in this case, we as MPD Shell can potentially be producers, NGMC, Southern Energy, Gasling can be suppliers. If they were licensed from DPR in NGMC at the moment we have predominantly NGC as the transporter because they are the owners of the existing pipeline unless new private sector development is realized. There will be distributors as well as the customers. So I assume the customers we have are Bua, Obajana, fertilizer plant and our power plant for power industry. In this case we can see a simple assumption that NGMC has both supplier and a shipper license. NGC is the only transporter. Now, based on the current arrangement, I have looked at the gas day supply scheme in which a nomination was done of 1.2 BCF, which is 1,200 million scope, and customers consume what they nominate. So gas is balanced, NGS only charge, NGC only charges transportation. We don't have an overrun because the system is balanced. Let us look at other scenarios where on a previous day, Obajana and fertilizer plant were having an imbalance. Obajana consumes 50 million scope more than what they are supposed to do. And the fertilizer plant consumes 50 million scope less than what they are supposed to do. As a balance up, that simply means at that stage, we still have a balance because the transporter do not need to do anything at this stage, only charging transportation. However, because of the imbalance, there is a legal requirement of the two shippers, which are the NGMC and as well as SGN to evacuate the 50 million scope from the pipe, as well as add the 50 million scope to the pipe. That gives an opportunity for what the current network could call capacity transfer swap or a future opportunity for training as, uh, sorry, for trading as our market evolves. Now, assuming that the, trans, uh, the shippers couldn't balance their network, they couldn't balance their portfolio, then NGC as a transporter will be able to charge them a corresponding amount for NGMC, they have already they left 50 million scope in as yeah they left 50 million scope in the pipe, so NGC is going to charge them at higher market price for that particular deal. At the moment, is 10 percent higher. For SGN, they still have uh, 50 million scope, so that simply means the 50 million scope they have will now be bought under the market price. According to the existing regulation, 50, sorry, 90% of the price will be paid by, uh, by transporter. And that simply means by increasing and decreasing the charges, we are incentivizing the shipper to balance their portfolio. Now let us look at a likely case where there are excessive imbalance where the transporter had a serious difficulty of meeting obligation to balance 600 million scope. If their line pack are not enough to do that, they may have to struggle. And in that case, emergency may be declared because based on the network regulations, they are expected to keep an efficient, safe and economic operation of the pipeline. Uh, much more detail of each one of this point I'm making are too complex to be uh, gone through within a few minutes is entire daily uh, discussion and conversation. Now let us see how some of the existing problems we have, such as vandalism, contractual obligations are handled under the network code. If a pipeline is vandalized, 
the existing regulation of network code encourages the transporter to do everything possible to make sure that pipeline is put back into operation. There are implications if that do not happen because customer satisfaction is important. There are contractual obligations. Customer will have option to shift from one supplier to another if you get more security in terms of supply and also issues regarding competition may come up. So in conclusion, the existing code we have could be complex, but a simple entry exit process can make it possible in Nigeria within few weeks we are because NGC has all it takes in terms of infrastructure. Regulator and players need to understand their key role in meeting the third party access. Capacity building is necessary, but it differs with the player. What the regulator wants and the transport quota will differ significantly. Network administration is an important area and that is what we expect GACN to really look into and be able to create that kind of online boards and market development step is the key role of an uh, operator or oh, sorry uh, of regulator at this stage thank you very much for your attention back to you mr Pollard. thank you very much dr abbas for that presentation on the network code um, and lpg utilization um, the next presenter will be Mr. Nuhu Yakubu, who will now talk to us about regulatory issues relating to the development of LPG industry in Nigeria. And I'd like to remind all of the uh, uh, distinguished um, panelists to please um, turn their video on while they're speaking. Mr. Yakubu, are you ready? Can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Um, your presentation is not showing yet. Okay, it's coming up there. We have. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my pleasure to uh, present these uh, paper to uh, the audience. But I thought I should expand the presentation today to. Um, um, speak beyond uh, just regulatory issues relating to development of our in every sector in Nigeria. I thought we should discuss something more interesting and exciting, uh, considering that uh, there are a lot of enthusiasts in the house today who may be uh, enthusiastic about learning. So I'll just take us through uh, 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 the sectoral overview and understanding uh, for the maturation of alternative RPG applications to deepen domestic uh, RPG utilization in Nigeria. That's my topic uh, today. I'll just, uh, I'll start by letting you into where we are as an industry. We are uh, today currently, uh, facts, industry facts. Um, Nigeria has a total demand capacity of over 760,000 metric tons. That is as at 2019, uh, which is about 20% of total uh, in-country production. And also it speaks to about 90 to 95% of uh, uh, the RPG consumed, uh, sorry, the, you know, there's a 90 to 95%, uh, uh, um, that's, so there's a 90 to 95% it speaks to domestic LPG, the domestic cooking gas, uh, rather than industrial gas. Don't, don't mind my messing up here. And then uh, that also, there's a. This also speaks about 90 to 95 percent gap, demand gap in the in the uh, in the uh, LPG demand sector. Uh, uh, then current consumption starts sits at uh, like I said, 760,000 metric tons, whereas there's a projection of about three to three to five million tons per annum projection for Nigeria market's uh, population size of 200 million people. And then it's projected also, the understanding that we have is that the Nigeria PG market uh, uh, economy is at least a 10, a 10 billion US dollar uh, economy. Nigeria is a net exporter of LPG. We, we produce 
and export almost three, met three, three million tons of LPG per annum. And like I said, uh, uh, in spite of the fact that we're a net exporter of LPG, uh, in-country demand is, is supported by mostly uh, the LNG's intervention programs, uh, which is, accounts for maybe 50% of the market share. Uh, receiving terminals, none other than uh, those in largely the one in Lagos, but there have been a few terminals that have uh, cropped up now in the Niger Delta Axis, Port uh, Harcourt, Calabar, Ogara, as I'll speak uh, to later in my presentation. The, uh, the LPG market uh, are, uh, traders in Nigeria are largely licensed, uh, uh, called the LPG optics, licensed by the Nigerian LNG or, and the DPRO and usually uh, they form themselves into a club called the Africa's Club. And uh, important to note also that the uh, Nigeria PG sector is fully deregulated. Large, the, the, uh, the predominant LPG spec that is traded in Nigeria is the propane spec LPG. Now, uh, I'll just take us memory lane okay uh sorry i'm walking my screen here it seems it's blocking me Good. now memory lane uh originally from in the 70s lpg was largely available from the refineries and then distribution uh then later if you follow through my progression here this is not the main issues I want to discuss, but I'll just run through them. And then from uh, the 70s to the 80s, uh, and then to the 90s, we experienced um, uh, a federal government intervention, including the digitalization program, and then also the, uh, the, the regulation of the LPG, uh, and then the, which led to the development of over nine digitalization LPG plants across the country, and uh, across the six, six geopolitical zones. And with the most active one being the PPMC terminal operating out of Lagos. Uh, today, uh, like I said, uh, uh, the biggest players in LPG uh, is essentially the private sector players, uh, but uh, largely dependent on uh, LPG supplied by NLNG and also LPG supplied from uh, imports. And then also, uh, there's been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of traction, there's a lot of movement in the last few years, uh, last uh, five years, five to 10 years, uh, culminating in the, the gas flare down commercialization program that is ongoing today, uh, just to see how to free up more gas from the gas flare zones in Nigeria. Next slide. Okay. Now, the industry structure, Now, the Nigeria industry governance structure is uh, such that uh, it's simple to understand. It's largely governed by the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, uh, Ministry of Trade and Industry, uh, Ministry, of, uh, Ministry of Finance, Budget and International Planning, Ministry of Environment, and they all combine to develop and sponsor and implement uh, government uh, 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 direct directives, legislations, policies, and what have you. And uh, for my next slide, this is slow, sorry. Now, for my next slide, you see from the MDs, MDAs I mentioned earlier, um, the Petroleum Act of 1969 gives back into the DPRO, which is the main organ or the department under the Ministry of Petroleum that grants uh, licenses and gives guidelines for LPG uh, facilities built out in the country. Also for standard operating procedures for various facility types, uh, monitoring and enforcement and what have you. you equally have the standards organization of Nigeria, uh, the issue uh, quality control, uh, product quality, pressure, pressure rating codes and practice and operating procedures. Uh, we have the NIA 69, for example, of, uh, of 2013, which speaks to specification for refillable liquids, uh, liquefied petroleum gas. NIA 532, 
uh, transportable, refillable, welded joints, and what have you. Then the INI is 555 uh, for product specification. Uh, they also, also, and also, also gets involved in the monitoring and enforcement. Then you have the weights and measures. The weights and measures is under the Ministry of, uh, of uh, Trade and uh, of Industry. Just like uh, SON, uh, they are equally under the Ministry of uh, Trade and Industry. Uh, they, uh, are, are in the, my subsequent slides, you see what licenses they, they, they issue. That will include pattern approval and whatever for wind scales. Then you have the federal and state fiscal and urban planning and development control authorities. They are federal and state fire services, Nigerian police, Nigerian post authority, the MASA for the uh, waterways, uh, shipping, and what have you. And then the uh, NMPC is a very key organ of the uh, Ministry of Petroleum Resources responsible for, especially the supply side of FPG as we have it today. They will have the Ministry of Environment vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the, the Mineral Oil Safety Act that uh, enables them to govern the safety affairs in the FPG sector. Uh, the, Regulatory licenses and permits that these MDAs issue uh, will be as follows uh, for, for those of us who are aspiring to come in to the FPG space. We have the deeper licenses for uh, midstream. Our refineries uh, will require licenses uh, to refine crude oil to produce PMS and uh, ultimately LPG. We have gas processing plants to process gas to produce LPG. And then you have the downstream uh, licenses and permits as well, required to, uh, uh, for the operators of uh, depots, LPG depots, filling plants, uh, industrial storage, uh, li uh, licenses for hotels, for example, uh, retailers license, pipeline license, uh, uh, and what have you. Uh, for the network code, for example, that uh, uh, my previous uh, video speaker spoke about the network code is essentially governed also under uh, the DPR, like he said. And then service permits will include haulage permits, uh, inclusive of natural gas and for LPG. Uh, consultancy services are fall, fall under service permits, uh, construction, supplies, uh, LPG equipment and supplies, uh, maintenance services, training, and what have you. Uh, S1 issues approvals, the issue permits, and the issue certifications. Approvals usually will be for uh, importation of LPG equipment and other gases uh, for use in upstream, midstream, and downstream. Uh, you have import permits as well. Import permits are usually issued for purposes of LPG equipment. Uh, and also, you have the, the issue certifications for uh, test centers. Certifications also for LPG equipment uh, before you before they are deployed uh, for purposes of LPG build, LPG systems build out or infrastructure build out locally. Then you have the sun cap or certificate, and uh, then certificate of conformity for LPG equipment, which is usually renewed, uh, usually yearly, two years or five years, depending on the state of the facility. Then uh, you have uh, the Department of Ways and Measures uh, under the Federal Ministry of uh, of uh, trade and industry, like I said. Uh, they issue certificates of verification uh, for plants, uh, pattern approval, and the product trading equipment uh, calibration. Essentially, their duty is to ensure that the customers are not uh, uh, changed, uh, that, since that the weighing systems uh, or, or weighing system and uh, measuring systems on the RPG are properly calibrated. That, that's a, the essential role. Then LPG transportation side uh, for vessel registration and crew registration was our view. And then under transportation, you have over 45 uh, uh, various approvals and permits for road uh, transport, transport for bridges and bobtail truck, trucks of LPG. Uh, that's another matter altogether. I'm, I'm showing the cost of uh, this, today's interaction. We'll be talking more about the issues uh, around those. Then industry governance structures and the key players uh, speaks to uh, who are the key associations who have who formed ourselves into groups for proper advocacy and proper entrenchment of safety uh, practices uh, in the industry. 
uh, you have the Nigeria PG Association being the umbrella association for all PG uh, sector operators. And then you have the uh, uh, Nigeria Association of LP Gas Marketers, uh, NAGAM. You have, uh, it's an association of plant owners, specifically for plant owners. You have Nigeria Gas Association, like a sister association, I say, but in the case of Nigeria Gas Association, it's, uh, it, it encompasses all uh, forms of uh, hydrocarbon gases. Then various associations of LPG uh, retail uh, marketers are uh, there as reference. Then you equally have very strong uh, advo advocates for LPG in the LCCI, that's Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Uh, under the LCCI, they have the OPTS, Oil Producer Street section, and then you have the LPG subsection, uh, where uh, NLPG equally plays a major role. Then you have the major marketers association moment because they are major marketers they are essentially marketers of lpg uh, from the terminal operations uh, to midstream and then to bottling and to retail then you have independent marketers uh petroleum marketers association if they basically do right just about what uh, uh the major marketers do uh but just that in this in their case they are largely indigenous companies LPG supply industry and governance structure. Um, we have the NMPC as a predominant and a dominant uh, supplier for the market. Uh, we have the uh, CMD, the commercial department, that uh, uh, plays a major role in deciding what volumes are uh, traded overseas, traded as exports, and what volumes come into country. Uh, under the under their control, under their management, we have the uh, NLNG intervention program in collaboration, and all that IOCs as well. Uh, and then you have PPMC. This is the NMPC vehicle that uh, allows for the trading of LPG uh, domestically. Then you have the refineries, worry uh, worry refinery, Portacot and Kaduna refineries. Uh, they are largely LPG producers, even though uh, production is being. In, uh, uh, as we know, the refineries work epileptically. Then you have MPSC, uh, Nigerian Product Storage uh, Company, and uh, which is a majorly uh, facilities management company for an NMPC, uh, including uh, jetties, uh, coastal storages, inland storages, and what have you. MPDC is an EMP arm of uh, NMPC, and they are a major supplier of, L of LPG as we were meant to understand in the next, uh, hopefully this year, their product is begin, will begin to um, uh, supply the market. Then you have NMPC JVs, uh, Chevron um, operating out of uh, uh, Excavers, uh, ExxonMobil uh, also from the same project, and then LNG Bonnie Island uh, project. These are major suppliers, producers of LPG. Even though amongst all of them, uh, NLNG is the only one that has uh, been able to establish a concrete domestic intervention program that is able to uh, intervene, uh, mit mitigate the supply side challenges of domestic LPG supply in Nigeria. ExxonMobil like also contested, and the Chevron's cargoes are largely still exported. Other, others will include the marginal free producers, flesh side producers, imports. Uh, imports is very big in Nigeria. Right now, because uh, imports account for, uh, like I said, almost 50% of uh, the supply side. 30 to 50% depends on uh, who is acting. And uh, the demand structure, governance structure also speaks to demand, uh, demand and distribution. Uh, the, for the demand, we use, naturally will have the uh, imports and export uh, facilities. Uh, starting from the coastal terminals, um, uh, both coastal and inner land uh, depots uh, with their jetties. If, if it's a coastal facilities, uh, essentially to hold uh, cargoes for some uh, strategic endurance or uh, domestic market. Then you have the secondary depots, uh, including the bridging plant facilities. The bridging facility is essentially meant to hold and then re reload, uh, receive and reload um, uh, road uh, transport vehicles, truck, uh, trucks, including bridges and bobtails, especially bobtails uh, for purposes of distribution into 
uh, towns and cities like hotels and hospitals and what have you. Then you have marketers and distributors facilities, including cylinder bottling plants, uh, for the Coca-Cola type run, where you just bottle the cylinders and distribute, distribute to, uh, to, to consumers. And then auto gas filling plants, uh, which is now a big subject matter in the country, and it's a fast evolving uh, as a, a LPG subsector. Then you have the community-based mini plants, uh, or the skid plants, as we call them. Uh, they are meant to actually enable uh, improved accessibility for LPG users or will be users to LPG around their communities. Uh, sometimes you have them co-located in petrol station, filling stations. Uh, in that case, they're called add-ons. Then you have the LPG uh, retail marketers and peddlers. And this is essentially the next slide. This slide is uh, just a basic schematic of uh, what I've just spoken about from uh, LPG uh, uh, import, whether it's from uh, a local production facility in Borne or also uh, down to uh, a depot in Lagos or or, or, or Wari, uh, then uh, trucks to all the various demand uh, users uh, with the bridges and bobtails. I put this schematic just to illustrate what I spoke about. At the right hand side, you see the auto gas uh, um, application, cylinder application. On the left hand side, you see the door to door deliveries and, and the, the micron, uh, cylinder micron deliveries, and then you have the uh, uh, auto, uh, sorry, uh, captive power applications for LPG. Transportation, uh, you have the LPG uh, ships. Uh, largely these days, it's in Nigeria, we use the smaller vessel or medium-sized vessels, uh, uh, but the, the very large vessels, LPG vessels, are essentially for purposes of export of LPG. Uh, but the, uh, the smaller vessels, uh, it's to uh, so 18,000 metric tons of their about is what is largely used in, in country and uh, they're able to bet in our local jetties uh, from Lagos to the uh, south, south and southeast facilities like I mentioned earlier. And they also have um, the uh, bridges and uh, boxes like I mentioned. Uh, coastal transportation, uh, we have the uh, ships and the loading jetties as critical uh, facilities. And then you have the inland transportation. In inland transportation, you have the semi trailers and boxes. In Nigeria today, we have over uh, um, over a thousand LPG semi trailers and bridges. Uh, I think this this number is uh, is quite a uh, 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 is a modest estimate um, going by what we have today. Uh, and then preferred options will have been the railways, motorways. Um, uh, and then also the north-south trunk lines for natural gas and NGL liquids, um, and then other means of transport. But the inland waterways is a very, very is a very, very uh, interesting uh, topic, a topical matter today uh, that the federal government and industry operators are, are, are contemplating. And then required improvements in health, safety, and environment, uh, uh, with safety training for drivers. Uh, products transfer, safe couplings, uh, safety awareness, improved insurance practices, and one of you. This is some of the uh, uh, courses offered by NLPGA. This training. Then supply delivery issues. Um, state of the refineries, as we know it uh, today, is not uh, is not. Good. Uh, so refineries actually represent zero market share in uh, LPG supply side today. Uh, then, um, and then the, even when they are in operations, uh, they have cap issues, uh, loading arm issues, and what have you. And then uh, coastal inland facilities uh, that are in, uh, in operations today will be the 4,000 metric tons coastal, the NMPC storage in uh, Apapa, in Lagos. Uh, uh, then, however, we have the NMPC uh, uh, one metric tons capacity each inland storage uh, uh, built across the country. Uh, I mentioned them on the screen, on the screen to see Ibadan, Gombe, Makode, Nugu, Kanua, Papa, up to Lori, except for Calabar, which has then been concessioned to Sahara. 
And then shallow inland waterways is also a major issue. Uh, like I mentioned earlier in my previous slide, uh, uh, there's over 40,000 metric tons aggregate storage probably developed and owned coastal terminals in Nigeria today, uh, including those in Lagos, Nagas, uh, Nipco, uh, NMPC, like I said, and a few other ones coming up. And then in the south, south, east, south, south uh, region of the country, you have Prudent in Ogara, you have Matrix in Wari, you have Stopgap in Kotak, and the more uh, Dozi in Calabar, and more that are uh, in the pipe in the pipeline. And further comments, uh, NMPC operates only the Boni LPG terminal, and upper part of that is uh, that is the uh, BOA, NOG, and BOP uh, jetties uh, for purposes of receiving basic LPG. Uh, which is largely inadequate in our view because uh, um, because of the traffic coming to these uh, axes of uh, Lagos, uh, both marine traffic and road uh, transport uh, traffic. Uh, there are other terminals, uh, out of which uh, things could be done. Um, we have terminals, um, there are six meters, six, that's the reason why I mentioned the other six, uh, seaports. Uh, I can actually serve a good purpose. Then you have the 10 crude oil terminals, uh, extra boats. Essentially, these are for export, export terminals. They could be all be brought to bear to uh, improving the supply side. And then, uh, I would, like we always say, uh, the numerous riverways in this country, in Nigeria, uh, from Monicha to Oguta to Okobo to Baro in Niger State and Jeba. The, the, the inland waterways uh, cutting across the country uh, can easily have a lot of LPG jetties and coastal storage facilities built out so that we can begin to move more LPG as demand grows uh, for the benefit of Nigerians. And I've just shared this schematic just to show you the, uh, just to, just to show you the, uh, the LPG facilities that are, that are in operation in Nigeria and those ones are in the upcoming. Uh, Navgas has uh, recently expanded its facilities from 8,000 to 10,000. I, I hope it's in operation now. Nico as well, uh, PPMC, Fort uh, Dozi, and what have you, uh, Stop Gap 8,000. And they're all coming uh, facilities uh, TSL, 12 metric tons, Techno Oil, uh, 12,000, MOB, uh, Binary Gas, uh, Gas Tunnelin, and others that uh, are in the pipeline. Uh, some kinds of uh, approval to construct some of the stages of uh, financial closure. is number of uh, gas uh, production projects that are ongoing, including the MPDC annual project. Uh, in, we have uh, Dangote refinery as well. These are for local market. Dangote alone are probably free of up to 250 to uh, 50,000 metric tons per annum. Annual project for sure. Uh, imports uh, is on the upper swing. Uh, and then they have the gas uh, composition. Position issues, position issues and control. So when specification is a function of pressure rating, as uh, uh, NI is uh, 5555, buy and traded out of NMPC refineries are also largely between spec LPG. And NLNG spec is largely in the classification of storage facilities to warehouse separately between and propane spec LPG for industrial, auto gas, and power generation purposes. The pricing is also an issue. Uh, NLNG remains a uh, dominant domestic supply, like I said, and it prices its product on Montbell View, uh, operating out of US, uh, US uh, based reference. And NMPC uh, uh, has locally uh, determined the OSP, uh, official selling price, which is locally determined. So there's a need for unified domestic pricing uh, reference platform. Uh, and uh, since Nigeria is inching towards the one million market, million ton market size, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, um, it's looking feasible that the West African regional reference, pricing reference, should be imagined anytime soon. And then um, um, there are also 
pricing preferences as uh, internally determined by local producers, uh, onshore uh, marginal producers. Uh, ceiling population is an issue um, on the demand side. Um, statistics that we have three million, between three to five million cylinders, uh, there's really no real data. Uh, before, five years ago, it was worse, it was around about a million cylinders. But uh, the, the cylinder population, as with LPG uh, demand itself, has seen it, uh, some quantum uh, growth in the last five years. Compared to African countries like South Africa, with a population size, uh, with a quarter of Nigeria's population, it has a cylinder population size more than 10 times or uh, 15 times uh, Nigerian uh, FPG cylinder population. Uh, so that speaks to an opportunity for cylinder manufacturers. Reason why companies like uh, Technoil has uh, invested in cylinder, uh, cylinder manufacturing, commissioned last year. Uh, we have uh, other manufacturers that are coming on stream as well. Uh, unfortunately, the older structuring plants, uh, NG, NGCC in Ibadan, uh, and also the Midlands uh, in Abakuta uh, are no longer in existence. They have gone under because uh, the market didn't favor them in the last 10 years plus. Uh, the cylinder ownership is uh, a mix of uh, marketer owned and uh, uh, user own. Uh, discussions are on as to how to moderate that in the near future. <coughs> Mr. Yusubu, you have, you have a lot of feedback on your presentation. So yeah. if you can um, try and adjust so that the feedback doesn't distort the presentation. And also, I'll try to uh, wrap up soon so we can get to the next. Yeah, okay, so no problem. I'll just have a few more slides. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, recertification plans are currently in existence, like I said uh, earlier, and then cross filling. The loss of value for money and putting handlers at, and users at really all those issues are we discouraged. Uh, I don't know how many more I have, but I'll just run through the many slides. Uh, but this is the uh, market share. This is the RPG demand user and home uh, household cooking. Uh, uh, you know, this is the uh, market mix, okay, energy mix. Uh, and you can see RPG there just run about 5%. And then uh, switching to RPG, uh, these are applicable uses uh, for RPG. Uh, one of the key incentives would be the building codes um, for. Um, um, uh, uh, the regional planning authorities to introduce RPG into building code, just the same way you have uh, electricity piping, what RPG uh, needs to be considered building codes, okay? And then awareness session is key. And then uh, uh, critical issues, I'm sure we'll discuss these in, uh, in, in the, in, in the uh, forum. Uh, to leave us uh, schematics like this, uh, the value chain uh, and investment needs, uh, the industry uh, investment in more coastal terminals, uh, onshore product processing facilities, marine transport, bulk breaking, mini pits, and what have you. I have uh, many more slides, but uh, I'll probably stop here. Uh, just run you through uh, domestic applications, uh, multiple applications, sector applications that uh, might uh, investors in LPG. Thank you very much, Mr. Yakubu. It's obvious there's so much more uh, that we need to share, and that's why this is a series. We'll be having a few more of these engagements with our participants. But moving on, let's talk, let's have Dr. Steve Johnston uh, share his slides on uh, third-party access and LPG utilization safety. He will be focusing a whole lot on LPG. So Dr. Johnston, are you ready? I'm ready now. I'm just about to share my screen. Okay. Is that okay for everybody? It's coming up. 
Yeah, and you can make it presentation mode. There you go, thank you. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. I'm here to talk to you and to give you an introduction to LPG utilization, safety and competence. Uh, I'm gonna talk quite a bit about the UK uh, supply chain and the UK model in terms of compliance and safety. So in the UK market, the LPG, we have two products. We have butane, which C4H10. So butane is one of our liquefied petroleum gases or LPG. Butane has a boiling point of around about minus two degrees Celsius. So therefore in the UK, we tend to use this for, it has a seasonal usage, so we can't really use it for our main heating in the winter. For leisure activities and some indoor use. So you can see from the photograph, uh, we've got lots of leisure activities such as caravan holidays, uh, barbecuing, etc. The other market we have is uh, the propane market, propane which is C3H8 on LPG. Uh, this is a modern market in the UK because it has a boiling point of minus 40, therefore it is expected by, by the government in the UK. We do have quite a, a large bottled gas market. The biggest market uh, is bulk storage. The, the bottled market tends to be used for cooking, barbecuing, water heating, and a little bit for house heating. But obviously house heating becomes quite expensive through bottles. Uh, so where possible, we install bulk storage. Bulk storage gives us the opportunity to, to buy more fuel, therefore we can get competitive rates. Uh, traditionally, our bulk storage vessels were all above ground, um, but these days we tend to, where possible, install the tanks below ground. This gives us a big advantage in terms of safety because we can get much closer to buildings, properties, uh, because we reduce our problems through third party fire, etc. Our bulk storage market, we normally uh, monitor our vessels using a telemetry system so the the gas top up is done automatically via the supplier uh, commercial applications much like yourselves we have lpg used for forklift trucks space heating we use it quite a lot in the mobile catering sector for events and things we use it quite widely in agriculture Again, the industry, lots of different industries, and also autogas is still quite popular in the UK. There are other specialist activities, such as special effects, where LPGs use quite, quite a lot in special effects for events and movies. And also in the fire training schools, there's lots of LPG installations at many of the uh, international airports in the UK that are used for training our firefighters. Another market to discuss, and also this is international and, uh, and UK LPG and natural gas markets, is power generation. So power generation with gas can either be temporary or, or it can be permanent. We do lots of work with a company known as Agreco, and Agreco in Mozambique partnered with their local partner, Shaka, and in 20 weeks, they built a 100 megawatt power plant to inject power into the South African power pool. The Greco also installed an LPG power plant in St. Crooks, Virgin Islands. It's only a 20 megawatt power plant. Again, it just shows the utilization of, of gas. As I said, our company, S-Gas, we're proud to be the global gas training provider for Greco. We've built several mobile training rigs and facilities, and we've also devised lots of internationally recognized qualifications for Agreco. So I'll now move on to a section on competence and compliance. Obviously, it's very important that everybody that's involved in gas has got an understanding of safety, the product, et cetera, et cetera. 
So therefore, everybody involved would normally in the UK cover what we call a core competence. And then they would move on to individual competencies depending on what scope of gas work they, they carried out. So the fundamental competencies would include things like combustion, fuel properties and characteristics, dealing with gas escapes, and then the application of codes of practice and statutory regulations. So in the UK, our compliance, our competence and compliance model basically states that anybody working on gas, whether that is natural gas or LPG, must obtain accredited qualifications in all areas of gas work that they work on every five years. In addition to that, we have a national registration scheme for gas engineers and that is by our safety executive, the HSE, and the registration scheme is known as Gas Safe Register. The Gas Safe Register have a number, of, they have a hundred and so inspectors in the UK, and they will inspect gas work, they'll take examples of gas work from various companies. Some of it is programmed inspections, and some of those are targeted spot inspections. In addition to that, anybody working on gas obviously must hold the appropriate public liability insurance. So I'm just going to give you a few slides now with some examples of what I mean by the fundamentals of LPG and the things that we might cover in the next part of this series of, of training events. So things like the properties and characteristics of gases are extremely important. The properties and characteristics are considered widely when we look at codes of practice, the manner of installation, how gas is released, how gas burns. So this slide is just looking at the calorific value or the heat content of fuels. So we generally, in the training, we will compare natural gas, propane and butane, just to, and, and talk about the, the benefits and dangers of various different aspects of the fuels. One of the things um, that we need to, to discuss with LPG is the fact that its density is much heavier than air, somewhere between 1.5 and twice the weight of air. So when LPG is released from a pipe, it will always gather at low level. So where we've got things like drains or basements, LPG is extremely dangerous, but the codes of practice give us guidance on where and where we can't install tanks appliances. Another important factor is the limit of flammability. So if we have a room full of gas, it won't burn. And it won't burn because 